mighty dragon. Thou art a true born heir. Lend me thy strength, O kindred. Deliver me unto greater heights. The lands between was once a perfect world, sheltered beneath the golden luminescence of the Erd Tree, and fortified in its constitution by the Elden Ring. There was no room for imperfections, and despite that fact, we do know of one imperfection, the Tarnished. For some reason or another, the Tarnished were exiled from the lands between and sent across the Sea of Fog, where the golden grace of the Erd Tree abandoned them. Sometime after the Tarnished exile, the Elden Ring, the source of the Erd Tree's power, was shattered. We don't know who or what shattered the Elden Ring, or even why or how they did it. All we know is that after the Elden Ring was shattered, the world was no longer perfect. Sometime after this shattering of the Elden Ring, a war broke out, and this war came to be known as the Shattering. The actions of this war brought a plague onto the world, the toils of which was the loss of grace and abandonment of the Greater Will. Despite all the troubles, the Greater Will was not lost completely. A prophecy once foretold that the Golden Grace would go find the Tarnished across the Sea of Fog and call them back to the Lands Between to claim the shards of the Elden Ring and become an Elden Lord. And that is where our story begins. It is now our job to seek out the holders of the Great Runes, the shards of the Elden Ring, and brandish the power for everyone. So then, who are the holders of the Great Runes? As of right now, we only know of one, and his name is Godric the Golden. Godric was an outcast. Born a weakling child, he coveted the strength of his kin. So if we know that Godric is a demigod, who then would be his kin? We know that in the current state of the lands between, the political atmosphere has surrendered authority to Queen Marika the Eternal. We know that Queen Marika is the mother of the demigods, and her surname, the Eternal, suggests two things. It is either her physical body that is immortal, or her fame or power will stretch forever. But as of right now, we don't know. This family of Queen Marika has really come under question as of late, with lots of new names coming to light. In the Holy Family of the Lands Between, we know of several similar sounding names. Names. And we'll talk about these in chronological order, starting with our first one, Queen Marika. The next name in the Holy Family that we learned about is Godric. And as of right now, those are the only two members that have been officially confirmed. But we have plenty of cause for speculation based on recent leaks. If you guys remember a few weeks back, we had that leak where Cornish comedian, Colonel King, posted on his Instagram story that he would be playing King Godfrey in Elden Ring. Now it's no secret that both Miyazaki and Martin like to use common names to differentiate families in their worlds. For example, Gwen, Gwendolyn, and Guinevere. So it stands to reason that they'd do it again here. And we can add Godfrey to the list. Now earlier this morning, the official announcement came from the collector's edition of Elden Ring, and with it we learned something very interesting. That the name of the Valkyrie character is Melenia Blade of Mikela, and both of those names are strikingly similar to Marika. And for now, we'll add them to the list. But we're not done yet, there is one more name that bears a common trend with these. And that name is Melina. Melina, as we know, is the new Firekeeper character in Elden Ring that assists the Tarnished on their journey throughout the Lands Between. Now we'll talk more about her later, but for now let's take a look at the comparison of the names. I've marked the letters that definitely signify a connection in bright gold, which on the female side we can see all the names clearly start with M and end in A, while on the male side they share the name God. And I've marked the letters that might signify a connection but aren't as strong in this tannish color. And we can see that all the names on this list share that strong I sound, and three out of four of the female names share the soft L. So clearly, these names sounding similar are not by accident. It is very likely that Melina belongs to the family. But if that's the case, then it suggests the question of, why would she assist the Tarnished in taking down her kin? Well, in the current state of the Lands Between, we know that the demigods are currently squabbling and making war over fallen territory, and a battle of factions is taking place. Personally, the fact that there's even squabbling between the demigods at all suggests to me a serious lack of power for Queen Marika. So, if Melina is one of the demigods, then there's a few reasons why she might want to help us. Perhaps she wants their honor to be sustained, and their noble legacy to be maintained, and by us the Tarnished killing them and taking the shards back, maybe that could be achieved. But I think there's something deeper. Something that doesn't result in a good ending for us. And we can base it off information we just learned today. However, this theory is going to go deep into speculation territory. And I'm really interested to see what this turns out to be when we learn more information 
but here it goes. Officially, we know that Melina has her own ulterior motives and self-ambitions and reasons for helping us out that we don't know yet. Unlike our firekeepers in the past, who were kind of there as just gameplay aspects and took a back seat, Melina is going to play a much more central role. And to figure out what this could possibly be, we need to go back to a leak from Omnipotent from a very long time ago. And in that leak, he suggested there would be a war between the red-haired race and the white-haired race. And clearly, we see that these two races do indeed exist. Now you might have noticed that the two characters I used to portray this fact belong to the same family according to the theory. But we actually have something to back up this as a possibility. And it comes from a Bandai Namco YouTube comment that reads, In the lands between, a tarnish is not characterized by the loss of the color red, but of another color. And there's something in that comment that I'm going to read into very heavily and that is the loss of the color red. If we're going to speculate based off this comment, then there's room to assume that one can lose the color red, and based off that, we can theorize that the white hairs have somehow lost this color red and are now at odds because of it. So, what else can we base off this idea? If we take a look at Melina, her hair just happens to be the perfect medium between red and white, so perhaps she's in this sort of middle ground between losing her red and falling to the white. Now, there is one final thing that kind of blew my mind, while I was watching this gameplay demo and listen for it really quick. Mighty dragon. Thou art a true born heir. Lend me thy strength, O kindred. Godric refers to the dragon as a true-born heir and one of his kindred, but what could the dragon be a true-born heir to? There's a few possibilities. We know that Godric is obsessed with all things golden, and it could be that the dragon is a true-born heir to the Erd Tree. And to back up this claim, we can look to the four-winged dragon of the Summer Games Fest trailer. Upon very close inspection, this dragon appears to have golden eyes, and the sort of gold-encrusted undertones on his wing. And we know that gold in the eyes is the symbol of the greater will and the golden grace being bestowed on someone. But as a side note, the dragon also has white hair going down his spine. So if he has golden eyes, he could technically be a true-born heir to the Erd Tree, and the white hair could also possibly make him a kindred of Godric. So if the dragons are the true-born heirs to the Erd Tree, then perhaps the royal family has usurped this. And we also have a way to tie Melina into this. Looking at the close-up of her face here, we can see that her left eye is shut by a tattoo. And the tattoo too is very interesting. It appears to be the shape of a dragon's wing. So is Melina somehow tied to these dragons and possibly a true-born heir to whatever it is Godric was referring to? I don't know yet. That's about as far as I've gotten with this theory and it's only been about four hours of thinking about it. This is my third video that I've made today, so my brain is a little bit fried, but that's where you guys can come in. What do you think about this theory that I proposed? There's definitely a picture forming here, and I'm really interested to see what you guys think. But as for now, that's where I'm going to end it. We have a lot more to dive into in this gameplay preview, and a lot more to break down about Godric himself. So expect a lot more videos like this one coming your way, but leave a like on this if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll catch you in the next one. Yeah. <laughs>